Hello and welcome to the Ink and Crew World Card Making Day event. So I am officially the first one to uh, hop in and do a card making video for you. And just wanted to say a big welcome and thanks for joining us today and hope that you have a great time and are stamping along with us and doing all the fun things um, as well. So if you are here and watching live, you know, feel free to pop in and say hello or not or whatever. You know, this is kind of a relaxed day. We just wanted to uh, <laughs> to come in and make some cards with you guys and um, have a good time and give you some laughs, hopefully. And um, have you? it's been fun watching all the chatter out in the page today. So it's been, you know, like I said, it's just been watching you guys and I'm glad you all are excited about World Card Making Day like we are. Um, so again, welcome, welcome, welcome. I see everybody's hopping on. I see Mary and Carol and Jamie and Kim and Michelle and Karen and the names are flying by and I'm not able to read them so <laughs> as quickly, but uh, thanks so much. I appreciate y'all being here. And um, like I said, hopefully you enjoy the day with the team. And um, you know, since we aren't really able to do a lot of things in person, well, we, I mean, we can do some, but probably not a huge gathering. It's nice to be able to get people together out online and um, be able to hang out with people from all over the world, because I've seen there are people from Australia here, lots of people from the United States here, um, people from the UK. So again, it's been just a lot of fun uh, watching everybody come in and... and um, start checking out the group and answering questions. Um, that's one thing I did want to remind you about is that we do have a bunch of little prize patrol questions that you'll see kind of popping up here and there. There were um, several we posted yesterday, some that we're going to post throughout the day today. So hop in and make sure you're answering those questions and um, you'll be entered to win the prizes in them. So again, just lots of fun giveaways and um, hopefully a fun day for everybody. Um, what else? Oh, my favorite drink, iced tea. Just plain old, straight up black iced tea, nothing in it. I don't do any of the, you know, nothing flavored, no, no sweetener, no nothing, just plain old black iced tea. And I do have a little secret stash that I do not show my kids or my husband of Dove dark chocolate with almonds in it. That's my little, <laughs> my secret stash for when I am um, have the munchies when I'm doing my creating. So, all right. Um, a couple other things, housekeeping things about this group. Um, if you aren't able to catch the lives, you're always welcome to hop in and um, join and watch the replays at any time. This group is going to stay open for as long as Facebook will allow it to. Um, we probably will archive it at some point, but um, you know that doesn't that means you can still come in and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, watch the videos and things. Um, just won't be able to add new people and add comments. But at this point, we're going to leave it open. So uh, if anybody is interested, uh, they're you know welcome to come back anytime and check out the videos or look through the projects or you know whatever you want to do hang out in the group um what else uh and i think that's it you know let's get started i'll stop yapping <laughs> and get busy stamping that's what y'all came here for not to listen to me carry on so all right so this is the card that i'm going to be making with you today i kind of went with a little bit um clean and simple because that's sort of my style uh, but like I said, hopefully uh, there's a couple little techniques, not big ones. I don't do big major techniques and all sorts of 3D and whatever. I kind of am a super clean and simple stamper, um, but occasionally do throw a technique or two in there for you. So that's what we're going to be making here today. Uh, it uses the Gorgeous Leaves Stamp Set Bundle from Stampin' Up. And um, if you don't have this set, you all should have this set because it's beautiful and you'll love it and you'll use it a ton as well. <laughs> so um, it's got some really pretty leaf images, leaves images, is that what you call them? And then uh, a couple kind of backgroundy images, like some little leaves. And then, um, oh, I see somebody, yeah, Gloria's son just made her a latte. How do you get a son that makes you a latte? Shoot, I'm still making breakfast for my kids. <laughs> so, um, and it's got a beautiful set of dyes that coordinate with it. Uh, so a couple of these cut out the stamped leaves. And then we've got a branch and the really pretty intricate leaves, which is what I used um, for this background leaf here is this intricate dye. All right, um, so that is the die set. And again, if you don't have these, you need them. And uh, you can get them as a bundle from Stampin' Up and save 10% if you do that. So let me set this aside over here. Um, one other stamp set that I actually used on this one is the Welcoming Woods stamp set. And I used the, there it is, the Happy Birthday Sentiment and the Celebrate on the inside. And then I also use these little leaves on the inside. Um, so this is the other stamp set that I used to make this card. And again, it's from Stampin' Up, and they're both in the current mini catalog. So if, again, if you don't have those, the Welcoming Woods is a beautiful set as well. So, all right. So everybody, uh, 
Thanks so much for uh, hopping in and joining me today. I appreciate y'all being here and um, let's keep going. All right. So uh, I started by, and I did a couple things ahead of time because I know my embossing, die cutting and embossing machine is off to my right and I'm not on screen when I use that a lot. So um, it's a little weird trying to, you know, I try not to be off screen as much as possible because I'm sure y'all want to see and hear me. <laughs> All right, um, so I use the Timber 3D embossing folder, which is again another one of the new ones from the uh, Stampin' Up! mini catalog, and I went ahead and embossed a piece of basic white cardstock, which I know is hard to see um, because it's white on white, um, with that uh, embossing folder. But you'll be able to see the embossing just a little bit better once I get going here with the blending brushes. Um, so I'm going to use Coastal Cabana. That's what I started with around um, a little bit closer to the center on this one. Um, so for the blending brushes, just take it and kind of swirl it over your ink pad. I usually start by swirling it a little bit off the actual project just to make sure that I don't get a big glob of ink somewhere. And then we're going to start brushing the ink onto the panel here and like I said hopefully you can kind of see the a little bit of the ridges starting to show up a little bit better as I add a little bit uh, more ink with it. So y'all having fun today? Is everybody working on projects? Um, hopefully you are doing a little stamping or even just hanging out and watching is fine. You could stamp tomorrow, you know, anything to avoid housework. That's kind of my theory on it. <laughs> so um, yeah. And hopefully you're enjoying from your, you know, the, your stamp room in your pajamas or, you know, with your drink of choice. Like, well, I did actually change out of my pajamas. I officially have real clothes on right now. <laughs> and uh, I do have my drink sitting over here. I did set my iced tea away. Um, last time we did a group event, I was doing a video and about 30 seconds before I was going to go live, I dump my drink all over the place. And so I decided today perhaps I should leave my drink off the table the table so I didn't have another disaster. So um, next up I've got Bermuda Bay and I'm um, just going to brush that off a little bit. And since I'm going to a darker color, I didn't worry about getting a different blending brush out. If I were going with a different color completely um, or a lighter, going to a lighter color, I would have uh, switched and gotten a different blending brush. But I figured that since um, I'm just going a shade darker on the blue, that it was safe to go ahead and uh, just continue to use the same blending brush and I'm trying to keep the Bermuda Bay a little bit to the edge um, so that some of the Coastal Cabana still shows uh, in the center so, so it gives it a little bit more of a I don't know a little more depth a little more color to it and I think we're going to call that good so that's officially technique number one that I can show you that's kind of the extent of my technique skills <laughs> So, all right, so I've got this, and I, well, I should have started with the measurements. This is cut to three inches by three inches. Again, it's basic white embossed with a timber 3D embossing folder. And then I've got a piece of Bermuda Bay cardstock that is cut to three and one eighth by three and one eighth. So it's an eighth of an inch bigger, and we're just going to adhere the two pieces together. When I've embossed a piece of cardstock, I generally tend to try to put the adhesive on the flat paper rather than on the back of the emboss because sometimes I get a little heavy handed with my adhesive and then smash my embossing, which is not generally the look that I'm going for. So I try to, try to do the, if I can, sometimes it doesn't work out that way, but um, I try to put the adhesive on the flat sheet that I'm going to be adhering it to. All right. Next up, I'm going to grab a couple of pieces of, well, I'll start with one of the pieces of basic white, and that's the one that's going to be the main panel underneath my Bermuda Bay. And I'm going to just place this on here. I'm not sticking it down just yet in case I have a stamping oopsie and need to turn the paper over. <clears throat> not that I do have stamping oopsies, but yes, I do quite frequently. So I'm just trying to place this where I want it to be, and then I'm going to stamp my sentiment underneath it while the paper's still there, and then I'm gonna take the paper off and we'll heat emboss it. But I wanted to have the paper there so that I kinda knew generally where I was aiming for um, when I was gonna be doing my stamping. So, um, got Versamark ink and the set, ooh, I just, there. first mistake, just stuck the whole block in the ink pad, <laughs> which is always a good thing. Um, so I got Versamark ink and I'm inking up my sentiment from the Welcoming Wood stamp set. I'm gonna close up my ink pad um, because if you've ever had an inking disaster with Versamark uh, where you accidentally started up your heat tool um, with your embossing powder and had it go flying and stick all over your Versamark ink pad, you'll remember to close up your Versamark ink pad when you do your next set of stamping. So, <laughs> all right, so I've got that stamped on there and I know you can't see it yet, but I've got copper embossing powder and I'm just gonna sprinkle that on the card here and um, 
All right. And I'm totally missing the comments because I'm busy talking. So hopefully I haven't, if anything important pops up, I'll definitely hop back in and um, reply to comments or questions if I've missed anything that I should be reading. Uh, but like I said, I'm trying not to goof anything up on my card, which I don't know, some days I do better than others. All right, just picking the little excess pieces of the copper embossing powder off. And again, I'm going to close this up before I start up my heat tool just because I've had some disasters with it before. And I'm going to heat up the heat tool. And we've got um, the Stampin' Up! heat tool has two settings on it. Level one is for drying and level two is for heat embossing. And uh, so I've turned it to the level two setting. Level one is actually good for things like uh, if you're watercoloring and want the panel to dry a little bit faster, um, you can zap it with the level one setting. And uh, again, level two is for heat embossing. So thanks everybody for hopping in. I'm seeing everybody uh, hopping in and saying hello. I appreciate you being here. And uh, the team does too. And we're looking forward to a fun day of stamping with you guys and sharing. So here we go. The heat embossing is starting to happen here. Then once it turns kind of shiny and smooth, you'll want to stop the heat embossing because you can burn your embossing powder. Again, ask me how I know because I've done it many times. <laughs> so um, this piece of basic white was cut to three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. And I'm going to adhere it to another piece of basic white. Can you kind of see the white on white on white theme I got going on here? Um, this one is four by five and a quarter. Um, so I'm giving this just a second while I'm yapping to dry here or to um, cool off and, and uh set a little bit. If you touch the embossing powder immediately after you get done embossing, uh, you can actually smear it. So don't do that. Again, all things that I've learned uh, as a stamper because I've screwed up enough things. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so again, just adhering the two pieces together with a little bit of, whoops, maybe if I can get this on here straight, a little bit of stamp and seal. And again, just trying to get it straight and centered. That's the main thing that I'm shooting for here. All right, so I think I got that done on there. And then we're going to take our the um, panel that was embossed ahead of time, and we're going to add a little stamp and seal to the back of that as well. And we're going to just adhere that to the card front. All right, and again, I'm just kind of trying to get it centered uh, around the edges, get it fairly even, and um, even with the, the little birthday sentiment on there. And that's it so far for the card front. Uh, next up... I pre-cut this ahead of time, but this is actually, hopefully you can see the kind of pretty shimmer in it. I don't know how well it, it picks up on the camera, but this is from the gold and rose gold six inch by six inch metallic paper. This is actually the rose gold, but you can cut it from the gold, whichever one you prefer. Um, I just had more of the rose gold left, but since I was gonna color it, it doesn't really matter what color the base is. I just wanted a little bit of the shimmer effect to come through. And um, I'm using the Dark Poppy Parade. Stampin' Blends marker, and we're just going to color over the top of this. So um, this is a fun little technique that you can color uh, most of our uh, foil papers and things with the Stampin' Blends. Actually, yeah, I think you can color all the foil papers. But uh, this one I was just kind of pleasantly surprised to figure out it worked with. You do want to give it a second because it's, cut, it's not like a typical paper where the ink dries immediately on it. It does take just a second. Um, to dry to make sure that you don't end up with it all over the front of your card where you didn't necessarily want it. Um, so again, just give it a second after you color it to dry it or to let it dry before you start handling it. Especially, it's not so such a big deal if you're not using white cardstock, but if you're using white like I am, you may want to just give it a second <laughs> to dry. Uh, but that just gives it, uh, oh, I see I missed a little spot once I picked it up from the paper. So let me go back and color that little spot in here. But that just gives it a little bit of a shimmer, and it shows through the coloring. So I thought that was kind of a cool, I don't know, a cool little uh, thing that you can do with the paper. And then you can turn it to any color that you want. If you don't necessarily want it to be gold or rose gold, you can color it and have it be, you know, whatever color you're using on your project. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of liquid glue, and we're going to just adhere it in a couple of places. I don't need to use a ton because I am actually gonna be layering some of the other um, die cuts over the top of it. The main thing is I just wanna get it stuck down on the, the paper um, so that it doesn't go anywhere. I don't lose track of it. You know, Again, not that I've done that on a project, but yes, I do it all the time. Looking around for, I'm like, where is that die cut? And yeah, it's right there. So, all right, so just stuck that down. Again, just put a little dab of liquid glue under the center of it. And then we're gonna start doing some stamping of the other leaves. 
So again, I've got basic white, which you'll see is my, you know, theme here, <laughs> white on white on white. Um, it's one of those color schemes that I tend to like a lot and use a bunch. So I've got Bumblebee ink, and we're going to ink up the maple leaf from the Gorgeous Leaves stamp set. And just make sure I've got some decent coverage on that, which it looks like I do. And then um, just another little fun technique. I don't know if you noticed it on the card front, but around the edges of the leaves, there's just a little, little peak of Poppy Parade ink that I put around the edges. And I do that just by taking a Poppy Parade ink pad and I've got a little, it's labeled even, Poppy Parade uh, sponge dauber. And I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of the ink from my ink pad and just go around the very edge of this leaf and just tap it gently. And then you wanna go off your project over here and kind of make sure you get as much of the yellow ink out of the sponge dauber as you can before you go back over and do the same thing again. Just pick up a little bit more ink and go along the very edge of your image. And then we're gonna set that aside and I'm gonna close up the ink pad before I stick my fingers in it because I probably will. And then we're just gonna stamp that on some basic white cardstock. Now, if you get an image that you don't love when you do this technique, so there you got a little, little peek of the right around the edges. If you get an image that you don't love, it has too much or too little of the color on it, make sure that you clean your stamp before you go back and put it into the lighter color ink pad again, again, because you're gonna have the, the red ink around the edges of it, and that will transfer onto your ink pad. Again, ask me how I know, because I've done it. So, <laughs> so all right, um, same thing that we're gonna do here, except for we're gonna use pumpkin pie for this little leaf. Um, ink it up with pumpkin pie. And again, just make sure you've got good coverage all over everywhere you want it. And then I'm gonna grab my Poppy Parade ink pad again. And we'll go pick up a little bit of the Poppy Parade ink and then go right around the edge of this one as well. And then um, make sure you kind of clean off the ink a little bit, uh, off the sponge dauber so you don't accidentally transfer ink again if you have a boo-boo. And then we're gonna stamp that one as well. And there you go, it gets, um, the Poppy Parade, it didn't give as dramatic of an effect as it did on the Bumblebee because obviously they're more similar in color, um, but there's a little hint of the Poppy Parade around the edge of the um, pumpkin pie leaf as well. I almost forgot what color I was using. All right, so we're gonna do some die cutting here and I'm um, gonna grab this leaf die and this leaf die and I'm just gonna run this through my die cutting machine which is over here to my right. So I'll be off screen for just one second. So feel free to, to chatter and you know, Mary can maybe do a song and dance for you while, while I'm die cutting. <laughs> she does like to do that. All right. So everybody's got their chocolate or their uh, snack of choice and their drink of choice and they're ready to go for a day of crafting, hopefully. And, oh, oh, almost got it. I thought I was going to be able to run it through, and then, of course, nope, there we go. Okay, I think I got them. Hold your breath. I'm cutting both at once, so I'm hoping that I don't have a cutting boo-boo, but I think I'm good. All right. So there we go. Let me get the dies put back so I don't lose track of those. And then there are our two die-cut leaves. And, again, you can see that they've got the little peaks of the... Um, Poppy Parade around the edges, hopefully. Um, and it especially shows up on this one kind of in the, the little splattery look. And then we're gonna start adhering those to the card front as well. So the um, Poppy, the Poppy Parade, the um, Bumblebee Leaf I glued down with mini glue dots and just took a couple of those and stuck them on the back. So I have figured out that if I fold back the glue dot paper and then smash my project down on top of it, <laughs> that I can use the glue dots that way. Um, I find that to be the most effective way to pick them up. Um, so, because I know I've wrestled with them, that glue dots has changed the way that they um, do their packaging, and I'm not entirely sure why, but they switched around. They used to be the other way around. So, all right, so we've got a couple glue dots here stuck on the back of that leaf. And I'm just gonna stick it right over the top of my other leaf. Again, this is why I didn't worry too much about having tons of adhesive on my leaf on the back because I'm sticking the other leaves over the top of it. So drinking coffee and ignoring all your responsibility. I like it. That's, you're my kind of person, Marsha. <laughs> so, all right, I've got a little bit of the Bumblebee. This is the um, a quarter inch, um, one fourth inch gingham ribbon. And I'm just gonna take a little piece of that and we're gonna trim it off here. 
And don't look, Karen Kay, I'm sure she's probably having a heart attack because I'm using my paper snips again. She hates it when I do that. <laughs> so, all right, gonna take a little bit of stamp and seal and just sort of stick it right over the top of the leaves that I've already got on my card front. Fold this in half. And then we are gonna stick it down here over the top of my leaves. All right, there we go. I think we got that stuck down okay. And here's my other little die cut leaf and I'm gonna actually use Stampin' Dimensionals or my half Stampin' Dimensionals. Um, the little trick that I do with them, and I know people either love this trick or they hate it and they think it's ridiculous, but I love it. I cut them in half. So it's actually a full sheet of Stampin' Dimensionals and I just snip them right down the center of the dimensional and then I get twice as many out of the little pack, which I think is, you know, of, since I'm, you know, try to conserve, I'm, I won't, you know, well, Karen hates it when I call myself cheap, but, <laughs> you know, I try to conserve a little here and there. Um, so I figure stamp a dimensional stick just as well with half a dimensional as they do a whole one. So that's why I do it. Or at least that's my story and I'm sticking to it. And that's what I tell my husband. <laughs> See, think of all the money I'm saving by the half dimensionals. All right, so I've got that stuck uh, to the card front. The only thing I tried to do when I was putting my dimensionals on, if you prefer the mini ones, you can use them, but I prefer the half ones. Um, just make sure you try to keep your dimensionals so that they're not layering over the top of the ribbon so you don't get kind of a weird lump in your little leaf when you're adhering it to the card front. And... What are, oh, here we go. I was going to say, I know I have them out somewhere. Um, the last thing that I added to the card front was a couple of the brushed metallic adhesive back dots. Again, if you don't have these, uh, you definitely need to get some. I think that they maybe are on back order or maybe temporarily turned off for ordering right now, but they'll be back, I promise. And um, definitely get some of these if you don't have them. They're really, really pretty and um, just add such a nice, you know, for anything fall or Christmas or really anything, um, just add a nice little touch to your cards and your projects. So definitely get them and try not to drop them all over like I'm doing. Let me grab my snips here and grab this one. And we'll go ahead and just place that one, I think. Maybe get out of the way, ribbon. There we go. All right, so there we go. That's it for the card front, other than adhering it to the card base. So like I said, I try to keep my projects pretty simple. Um, but I, hopefully they're pretty, at least I think they're pretty. So, all right, let me flip this over and add some more of the Stampin' Dimensionals to the back of it. Um, oh, you weren't sure how I got them? Yeah, I just hack them right in half. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, that's how I roll. It's, uh, it conserves them a little bit, um, but mostly I actually find, and I know, again, there are many that don't agree with me on it, I find that they fit better in a lot of places, uh, particularly sentiments, because a lot of times the sentiments are longer and narrower. And um, the full dimensionals sometimes kind of peek out around the edges, and I don't love that. And the mini ones, you have to put like 89 of them on there to get them to stick to anything. So, so I, I just prefer the larger ones chopped in half. Um, so the card base, my original one it was one of my kind of standard card bases that opens at the top because that's my preferred card base. But I did want to show you that it also works if you prefer the um, five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter card bases. This also works for that. Um, so again, I'm just going to try to get it centered here and then stick it down with the Stampin' Dimensionals to the card front. And then um, I know I get a lot of questions. People ask me a lot, why don't you fold your card base in half before you assemble it? And for me personally, I find it easier when I'm trying to adhere things and get them straight if everything is laying flat. If I have my card base folded in half, it kind of pops up sometimes and flops around a little bit and makes it a little more challenging. So for me personally, it's easier if I keep the card base flat, stick everything together and then fold it as kind of the very final step. Occasionally there's a card that I can't do that with because it's a, you know, a specific fold or something like that. But generally I find that um, that works for me and that's why I do it that way. So um, all right, so I've got a little Bermuda Bay ink and the sentiment from the Welcoming Woods stamp set that we're going to stamp on the inside of the card. And I swear I'm almost done. Good heavens, I've been going on for 25 minutes already. All right, so we've got that stamped there. And then we're going to stamp a couple of the little um, photopolymer leaves from that same stamp set. And I'm going to use the, the colors that I used on the card front. So we've got Bumblebee. I'm going to set that aside so that I don't accidentally stick anything in the think pad. Hopefully, I won't. <laughs> so, got Bumblebee ink. I'm going to stamp that here. And then I'm going to clean my stamp and come back with the Poppy Parade ink. I'm glad y'all are liking the card and liking the layout. I, and uh, 
I appreciate the comments and like I said, hopefully you'll have a good time today and watching everybody else. I'm excited to see the other projects. I've had a few little previews of the projects, but I don't really know what everybody's making. So um, they just get to hop on and uh, make what they want. So I'm happy about that. and can't wait to see what everybody's doing. So again, cleaning my stamp in between times. And the final one is pumpkin pie. And I'm just going to stamp those little leaves. Mm, I think we'll go right down here. All right. And now I'm just going to adhere this to the inside of the card, and I promise that I'll be done making this. So, um, again, if you are interested, I will be posting this blog on my blog tomorrow, which is stampwithamyk.com. And I will come back tomorrow once the blog post goes live and share the link to it in the description of this video. So if you're wanting to see cardstock cuts or if I said anything wrong, because I usually do and I forget things and whatever because I get busy talking, um, I will post all the details for the card tomorrow and then I will share it on my blog and come back here and share the details in the group as well. All right, let me grab the bone folder and give this a quick crease. And that is it for the card. So this is the one that I made ahead of time. This is the one I made here today with you guys. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video and um, have a great time today. Like I said, we're just looking forward to sharing with you and um, you know, hanging out with you guys for the day, doing a little stamping. Got everything ready to go. I've got a pile of projects that I'm working on as well. So um, we look forward to it. So thanks again, everybody, for being here. And um, gosh, I guess we'll chat soon.